If there's one thing I can't stand, it's someone that has to turn everything into an argument. Having an actual discussion, to me, is always more prosperous for everyone involved. But some people are incapable of rational thought, so discussions go out the window. The irony of my situation is that I chose a life of content creation, which is easily one of the most combative hobbies slash jobs that you could possibly have. The reality of doing what I do is that whether you are praising something or criticizing something, at some point, you're going to piss someone off. Because if I'm going to put it as blunt as I possibly can, some people have gotten soft living inside of their social media bubbles. A lot of people have made their entertainment their entire identity. And there's no better example of that than with most of the Chucky fan base. Spider-Verse fans were rough. Scream 6 fans were even worse. Hell, I got people mad at me right now because I liked the movie last weekend. But none of these compare to the unstable nature of the Chucky fan base by and large. So when someone asks me, why do you continue to watch this show? Why do you continue to make videos about it when the discourse around it is so toxic? Well, my answer is pretty simple, actually. Why? Because f them, that's why. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. <laughs> I have to be honest, as I always am on this channel, the best news to come out of this week's episode is that this is the mid-season finale and I'll be getting a several week break from watching this garbage. It boggles my mind that a show with so much potential, and yes, I do believe there is potential there, has been relegated to whatever it is we are watching every single Wednesday night. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? It's like Don Mancini and company are actively trying to sabotage this character and his legacy. It's not quite the same as the legacy sequels that have ruined many horror icons recently, but it's close. Actually, this might be worse because as far as I know, there's only one Chucky timeline. So you could ignore all of this in your head canon, just like you would say the Star Wars sequel trilogy. But in the back of your mind, as a fan, you still know this is where it's going to end up. With this franchise, we literally went from two horror classics in Child's Play 1 and 2, and we end up with this cringe-inducing joke of a show that some people seem to be turning a blind eye to as it pertains to how forgettable it actually is. This episode is hinging on Agent Price's plan to go through with the Halloween ball as a way of setting a trap to catch the killer. That makes sense. A bold strategy to say the least, and one that you know is going to blow up in his face by the end of the episode. And it does, by the way, to the surprise of no one. One of the things that I've said many times that I wish they leaned into more during this season was the relationship between Chucky and Henry. But similar to the Caroline and Chucky relationship, they never really go all in on it. Because they're too busy wasting valuable screen time on characters that nobody cares about. Don't waste my motherfucking time! They do seemingly rush into the Chucky and Henry stuff in this episode, where Chucky basically reveals his entire plan to Henry, and it just felt very anticlimactic because there was no build-up to that moment. It's all been kind of whispers and conversations happening off-screen up until this point, so it's very unfulfilling. I don't care! And then we have Tiffany going to jail where she receives the hero's welcome from the inmates, but not so much from the lead corrections officer. Tiffany, or Jennifer Tilly actually, references being a great actress because she's been pretending to be someone else for so long. This was no doubt a meta commentary on how terrible and over the top Jennifer Tilly's acting actually is. And then Tiffany meets another new character in prison, as if we have time for even more characters that I could have zero interest in. How can you not care? Like this. But this character is a Martha Stewart type who's in jail because apparently she snapped one day and killed her husband and his mistress. She even baked them into a shepherd's pie. I will say that Nia Vardolos, I think that's her name, plays Evelyn actually like a real person and not like a cartoon character, at least initially, so credit to the actress for making that work. The issue comes when the two have a falling out and Tiffany decides to punish her with a voodoo doll. Uh, 
but why? And what ensues is a kitchen set dismantling of this woman that unfortunately plays out more like a slapstick comedy skit than anything. Her performance is ruined when the actress is forced to make a lot of dumb facial expressions as she is forced to stab herself, burn herself, and eventually gets her face boiled off. Which was a cool visual, don't get me wrong, but it was pretty much ruined by the buildup. Not impressed. I will never understand the tone of this series for as long as I continue to review it. It almost felt like they were trying to do the Raimi horror comedy bit, but just failed miserably at it. Next, back at the White House, we have the trio showing up to the Halloween ball, looking like a discount chucky eyes version of the village people. I don't know what the f Jake was wearing as a costume, but all I can say is, wow. No, don't like that. Their plan almost immediately gets disrupted by White House security, and now they have no way of protecting themselves. So they put their heads together and they have to come up with a plan on the fly. Devin suggests just getting Chucky on camera, and then all of their problems will be solved and everyone will believe them. To which Lexi responds that nobody's going to believe that because of deep fake technology. Mr. Mancini, here is your shoehorn. There's your modern pop culture reference for this week, right on schedule. And then we get some teen melodrama between Lexi and Grant, and she won't jump on his bed, and then they kiss awkwardly. Really, I could care less about anything that's going on with them. Next, we have Henry carrying Chucky, and he bumps into the trio and Grant in the middle of the party. Grant comes to the conclusion that Lexi is using him, and of course she is, because Lexi is a b And this is when the power goes out, but off to the side, we have the president either hallucinating or misinterpreting seeing Chucky, thinking that it's his deceased son instead? Or maybe he just smoked too much weed before the party? I'm not really sure. I don't get it. But next we get a chandelier falling, orchestrated by Chucky, which kills a few of the guests. Those killed included the reporter chick, who was yet another waste of screen time because she basically accomplished nothing, and a weird nanny character who was introduced in this episode, and she really didn't serve much of a purpose other than telling Henry that he doesn't need to be afraid of ghosts. We also have Tiffany taking control of the lead corrections officer with another voodoo doll, and the reveal that Chucky has gotten a lot older since the last time we saw his face. Another somewhat decent idea that's been underutilized this season. If this episode sounds like a whole lot of nothing happened, that's because that's exactly what it was. We'll call this the killing off of characters who don't really mean anything episode. It's bad enough that I was feeling a little bit under the weather this week while watching, and I was trying to stay awake. But in addition to that, this episode offered nothing in the way of intrigue. I'll say it like this because a lot of modern movies have the same problem. If the show is treating characters and situations like they don't matter, then why should I be invested? The only real effort they put into any of the characters up until this point are with the trio, who have worn out their welcome and exhausted any patience I had with them, and Chucky to an extent, but even his character stuff feels unearned and uninspiring. Par for the course when talking about this abysmal Chucky TV series. I see you've defeated my Chucky. That's okay. I have bigger plans for you anyway. I think it's time we meet face to face. Y'all be cool. Got on. 